Hey, I'm Jeremy with the Austin Film Meet. This is Moranic Moments. I'm here with Casey Beeler. How's it going? Thank you very much for joining us. It's going good, Jeremy. Yes. I'm happy to be here. Yes, thank you. So what do you do like in terms of film in Austin? In terms of film, I'm an actor. Yep, pretty much. The biggest reason why I wanted to talk to you is um, because I feel like you're <laughs> like that just kind of did not do justice to what all you do <laughs> because you do a lot of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so in Austin, I'm also an improviser and I'm a designer, so I work at the Hideout Theater downtown and I do scripted acting and I'm a painter. I do like oil paintings and murals and stuff and like graphic design work. Yeah, yeah. and I'm um, costume design. Nice. And scenic design. Visual art and performing mm -hmm. sometimes go like head to head mm -hmm. against each other. Which came first for you? Visual art came first only because I was able at like the age of three, I guess, to start like drawing. And then throughout elementary school, mostly just was really into visual art and uh, sort of found some solace in that. But I'm a triplet and I have two brothers my age and we were constantly also like putting on little improvised performances and stuff when I was a kid. So <laughs> by the time I got to like middle school and started taking like theater classes, then that kind of the performance side of things started coming out. But I was always doing both at the same time, always taking art classes as well as like theater classes back to back. Even though people kind of told me, oh, you have to pick one. It's just like, you know, I didn't really want to. So I just never never decided to make that choice. <laughs> Would you say that Austin is a city that definitely supports um, people who do many things? Like, do you feel that this city tries to force you to label yourself at all? You know what? I feel like Austin is the least of the like places I've been to want to label me. I feel like Austin is, that's part of why I live here is because I feel like the I don't know, I guess the standard of living isn't so high. It's not like in Los Angeles where I feel like it would be very hard to do all the things I want to do. I'd feel like stretched totally. thin because I, I know from growing up there that like the commute is insane and I have a lot of family in LA. And uh, in Austin, just, I don't know if it's the, the pacing of life or the, I don't know if it's just because people are more supportive of local arts or, or what it is, but I feel like Austin has always let me be who I want to be and feel comfortable in my own skin, for sure. Like, yeah. definitely feel that very strongly. What attracted you to improv to begin with? When I was in high school, uh, a group of people in college called the, they were named the Well Hung Jury, which is a really kind of dirty joke I didn't realize at the time. But uh, they had all done improv and they had graduated from my high school and were now in college. And so they performed at the Hideout Theater and I had a lot of friends who were like, you gotta go check this out, you gotta see this group. So when I was like 15, I went with some friends and they were, they were very experimental um, for, for who they were at the time, uh, doing all different kinds of forms. And uh, I would sit in the front row for every performance when I could get out to see it and uh, just fall over laughing. It was just so great. And I, I didn't think of it as an art form at the time. I just was like, oh, these are a bunch of friends who are really funny, who enjoy being around each other on stage. Like that's the feeling of like a really good improv show. How does improv affect all the other things that you do? I think it's made me a more flexible person um, in terms of artistic work and kind of knowing when to, you know, stop something. Like when I'm working on a painting or something like that, I'm like, okay, it's finished now. This is good enough. Or even knowing when to start. I think people are really crippled by fear with any project. And improv kind of showed me just to like go ahead and take like those big risks and just leap and then see what happens, yeah. which is important also for films and auditions. And there's a lot of like high pressure, high stakes feeling scenarios. And improv is like kind of helped me to like keep my cool and just tr trust in whatever I'm doing. It's been it's been huge. Would you say that um, the Austin improv community is? Um, being utilized by the Austin film community? I think more and more, but I th obviously a, there's, there could be so much more collaboration there because they're improvisers, um, unlike other actors, I'd say, who haven't done a lot of improv training, are 
pretty flexible performers. Like they've learned over years, especially people who have been doing improv for a long time, to kind of this idea of hold on tightly, let go lightly, so they can like hold on to an idea and push that really hard until it's not working, then they can immediately jump to something else. How do you see Austin developing as an artistic haven? It seems like it's just been going in like this upward direction since I've been like living in Austin proper. It's been about nine years for me. So I, I feel like the film community is growing exponentially along with sort of the, the improv and comedy communities and the visual art community. I don't know, it all feels like it's on the yeah. up and up. So I just, <laughs> I want it to keep going. I want there to be more support there. Obviously there needs to be more like financial support. There's, I hear people, you know, often complain like, well, I can't stay in Austin if I can't support myself. I feel like it's getting better and people are like finding ways to be multifaceted artists who yeah. can do many different things. That's kind of the way you have to survive as an artist in Austin is have a lot of skills and do a lot of different things. Could you talk a little bit about uh, your food painting series? Yeah, I had made some, like just some food paintings um, for some like art box show, which is like where they just give you like this thing, like a little, like literally like a wooden box. <laughs> you paint on it, <laughs> they put a bunch of them up on a wall and sell them for like $100 each for like charity. So I'd done something for that where I was like, oh, okay, well, if I have to make something really fast, what should I make? Uh, I don't know, it might be fun to do something with food. And then enjoyed that, started thinking like, oh, maybe make these paintings of like my favorite Austin dishes, sort of feeling this extreme love for Austin at that time and still feeling that love. And um, I also have acid reflux disease, which is a stomach disease. So I was having this sort of weird uh, really love food, love this Austin food. <laughs> it gives me pain to eat it. I don't know, there's that something sucks. there. So made this painting series of uh, 10 pieces. Um, it's like sort of hyper realistic uh, on canvas oil paintings. People really like them a lot, like much more strongly than I even thought as I was making them. I sold the originals, but like have these little prints. So yeah, just, just going places and being like, oh, I really like how that looks. I want to eat it, and then I'm going to paint it. It's, I don't know, it's pretty <laughs> simple. I don't like to be snobbish about my artwork. It's just like, I enjoy the sort of hyper-realistic style, so. So awesome. So yeah. Have you ever painted something that you thought looked cool but tasted horribly? Oh God. You know what? If something is pretty horrible, I just won't do it. Really? I just, like, there's been a lot of times where I, like, you know, set myself up some donuts. Cool. Love it. So, yeah, the Korean part oh, of nice. it's cool. Do you draw or paint um, every day, would you say? Or? Uh, it's not really like that for me. Like, some people have, like, a sketchbook, and that's, like, kind of their practice. And for me, it's just I'm forced into doing work pretty consistently because of this. The, the Hideout Theater has all these shows, and I do all the design work for it, and a lot of scenic design pieces. So I end up being kind of forced into like, okay, this poster's due, or <laughs> okay, you know, this this new set design has to be put up, and so I'm just sort of forced into like quickly <laughs> making things, and and that sort of kept me uh, fresh. What is your advice for people who are balancing professional gigs mm -hmm. with personal passion projects? I think you have to do your own work yeah. as an artist. Um, you, just, you, just, you can't just wait for other people to involve you. And even if you do finally get on that dream project, who knows like, if you'll gel with the people on it. It's like you work so hard for this pie-in-the-sky ideal, and then it's like, you know, what if yeah. you don't really get along with... Yeah. The people you're on it with and then, yeah. and then what is it so <laughs> just like building those skills early on and like when somebody asks you can you do this and you have that moment in your head where you're like I don't know if I can I don't know if I'm qualified improv has taught me just to say yes and like s just go for it and yeah. usually you'll learn pretty quick like oh I'm in over my head or oh this is actually more manageable than I thought but just go ahead and take those big risks so what would you say would be the best strategy for 
all of these different artistic communities of Austin to come together. It's really easy as an artist to kind of find your people and just yeah. kind of hunker down with them and be like, no, I'm fine. I have my friends, I have my creative outlets and that's all I need and I'll just stay in this this bubble and that's 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 it. Yeah. But it's 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 kind of a service both for yourself and for the community to push outside of that comfort zone. And to be like, oh, I'm gonna go see something different, I'm gonna go talk to somebody. If I enjoyed their work, I'm gonna let them know. I'm not just gonna like hold that in. Um, and kind of realizing that cross-pollination will make everything better. Yeah. Um, I think it's like this phrase, like a rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. So like for any one thing to be doing well in Austin, it'll help everything else. So no resentment for other parts of the creative community. Like, oh, why, there's so much film work, you know, and that's where the money seems to be. What about live theater? Um, instead of seeing these things as separate, starting to like put them together. Is there anything you'd like to say about being a woman in media? Yeah, I think um, I think it's a bit of a harder road that women have, just because there's different prejudices, and obviously in film and in comedy, they seem to be pretty male-dominated fields, and so it can feel very strange to sort of try to sort of blaze your own trail in those worlds. But I think. You just have to like stick to your guns and like keep going and realize how many amazing women there are. Excellent. I think you have to be supportive of each other and kind of build right. each other up more than knock each other down. It's so easy in, especially the acting community, to view other uh, actors or women as, as competition purely when really um, your own success doesn't have any bearing on anyone else's success. Thank you so much, this was awesome. Um, where, where can we find you online? CaseyBeeler.com is my website, and I'm Casey Danger on Facebook. So yeah, there's <laughs> that. Uh, and and uh, Casey Danger on Twitter as well, yep. Thank you so much, this was awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, my name is Jeremy. This moranic moment has ended.